also, as far as security is concerned, Bro, did you just shoot that camera? Outage, but it's enough Don't shoot the cameras. Your key card is good for you got a taser, man. Hey, but what? But okay. we haven't even made it in the casino yet, dude. How it? I'm about to die. Oh my! I'm sorry. You drove right into him. I did not drive into him. Ah! God, Alex. One of you is flying. GTA Online is one of those games that I could say I really grew up with. With the initial release date of GTA 5 being in 2013 and online coming about four seconds later, I always found myself intrigued by the online mode, even if I wasn't much of an online player myself. I usually avoid online games, but something about GTA 5 just keeps me coming back. With the release of the online mode brought 33 million players to play GTA 5 online. And even today, it is the highest gross game in the world with accumulating $6 billion of revenue. And it's still making $13 million a week just off the online portion itself, off of microtransactions and so on. This success didn't just come from nothing. It had to be something to do with the game. Was the game great? Did the game do something that no other game did? What was it about GTA 5 Online that made it so successful in the end? Yes, he's one of us. Don't kill him. Oh! Look at my helmet. You don't like my pink backpack? I'm talking in the water. Right in the water. <laughs> you can give a lot of the game's success to the YouTubers who put their videos on YouTube to get the game exposure. But at the end of the day, it's not all about the YouTubers. Well, yes, these videos do get millions of views and it does get a lot of attention to GTA. It's not just the YouTubers that had a big part in this. The game wouldn't have this much exposure if it wasn't for the game itself. So what did it do? Whether it's roaming around the map until everybody gets kicked for whatever reason. Oh, sick. Having a cigarette on your hard day off. Or saying hello to the local people. <laughs> There's always something to do in GTA. And that's really the charm of the game. GTA is just a game that appeals to every gamer. There's death matches if you want to kill. There's racing if you like racing. There's heists if you like stealing stuff. You want to steal a big fucking plane from some mercenaries? Well, guess what? You can steal a big fucking plane from some mercenaries. You want to steal some cars for a totally legitimate businessman? Well, guess what, motherfucker? You can steal cars for a totally legitimate businessman. You want a fucking prostitute? You can get a fucking prostitute. But that's just emissions. Whereas in other games, after a match, they'll send you back to the home screen. GTA will send you back to the lobby. And in the lobby, there is at most 28 players that you can have fun with and interact with. Heck, if you want to, you can participate in the gang war. You do the missions, you get the drugs, you get the money, you buy the car, you get blown up by the oppressor. Wait just a second, you get blown up. Crybaby is online will try to get you to believe that the oppressor is somehow the worst thing that has ever been added into GTA 5 online, when it's actually not. In reality, it's because of the oppressor mark too that things like the tank, the night shark, the vigilante, and even the DeLorean are so heavily pushed on the online players. Defense is everything in online. How fucking boring would it be if you just got to fucking steal cars, sell cars, sell your weapons all day without any worry of being tampered with or being blown up by any enemies on the map? That'd be pretty fucking boring, wouldn't it? It gives a reason to want the fastest or the bulkiest or the most weaponized vehicles in the game to protect yourself. And it could be like a lot worse, you know. I remember in old GTA, sometimes you couldn't even leave your fucking apartment because somebody put a basketball goal right in front of your elevator. So the oppressor really isn't all that bad. But as Rockstar's games become more and more scripted, they're starting to make less sense. In movie-like experience where the player has to do things in the right order and fashion that Rockstar tells them to, or else they fail. While most people will complain about Rockstar titles like GTA and Red Dead Redemption 2 having very linear stories, GTA Online does not do that. The game is all about self-governing, and to me, the oppressor is just another way of giving people self-government. And you think, hey, that's what people want, right? Well, I guess fucking not. 
It's really strange to see people complain about Rockstar Games' as titles being too linear and not giving people enough self-government, but those same people will get on Twitter and hate the Oppressor Mark II. And it's not like it's only the Oppressor Mark II that gets the hate. Anything with a fucking weapon gets hate. Rockstar might have the biggest and most loyal fan base in the world, but those people are still the biggest crybabies on Earth. While it's fun to poke fun at the GTA fanbase, you cannot say that this game has not had a culture or a very big impact in the world. Uh, I used to sneak and play Vice City and San Andreas all the time. GTA, love, GTA since its release has always been super popular among the community and even today. Hundreds and hundreds of YouTube videos come out daily with millions and millions of views going into this one game just because it was mentioned in a title. You really can't say that about any other game except for Fortnite. But the reality of it is that GTA is older than everybody who plays Fortnite. The online mode just in February of 2020 reached the highest amount of players that it's ever had in its existence, with I think at 200,000 players on the day of the release of the Diamond Casino heist. That's a lot of people for a seven-year-old game. And this game is still thriving to this day with updates coming out just about every week and a DLC coming out very soon for the Crops and Criminals. The impact is huge and it will be huge until the release of GTA 6, but let's be honest with ourselves, that won't come out for a very long time. I will always remember GTA 5 Online as the first game I played online. Even back seven years ago, when I was nine years old, during the squeaker era, so everybody was calling me a fucking squeaker as I talked on my Kinect for Xbox 360 microphone. This game was still great to me. Just like every other game in the world, it has its flaws, but I feel like GTA Online's good parts are ways to bad. I wouldn't say GTA Online's my favorite game. Hell, it's not even in my top five, but when it comes to online gaming, this game is the pinnacle it is the peak and it's really what the gaming industry should strive to be a game that is built for its players not built for money okay that was that was kind of a bit of a fucking lie but seriously i've never thought of a game that i could ever be so attached to other than gta 5 online this game does it all it's able to capture people and make them want to play more with dlc coming out all the time and more fan services and more things to do in this game there really isn't a game out there that has done what GTA Online has done, and I really think that's what makes it a masterpiece. Even if it is a very messed up masterpiece. It is very obvious that GTA Online is not for everybody, and yes, it is a very grind-oriented game, but I find it's very relaxing to play GTA Online and sell cars and steal cars and sell my weapons while listening to the official podcast. This is, uh, this is where I get invited. And until Rockstar Games puts out GTA 6, which is basically whatever Sanando says it is, I really can't think of a game that'll be able to encapsulate what GTA Online has done for the community. And even in some cases, Red Dead Online wasn't able to do it. And it kind of makes me scared for GTA 6 Online, but that's up to the geniuses of Rockstar to come up with and for me to play. Oh, nobody gives a shit!